Anybody up for a what kicker a, oh. theft? Oh, I just love hearing a coach with a red ass. Yeah. This is great. So a uh, fun little kicker theft story in the world of college football. Chuck Martin is the head coach of Miami of Ohio. And apparently Graham Nicholson's one of the best kickers in college football. Uh, only missed one field goal attempt last year. He was 35 of 37 on extra points. Uh, he won the Lou Groza Award. Like He's like one of the best in college football. The best last year if you base it on just the award alone. Well, he was so in demand that apparently Alabama was really interested in him. And, um, well... Chuck Martin, the head coach of a Miami of Ohio, he was asked about it and just wanted to make it clear what actually happened. All right, special teams lost your kicker, Carter McLaughlin. He's at. We didn't lose him. He's at Alabama. We know. Yeah, exactly, I understand. We know exactly that. where I, he's at. Like, I, I, we, again, you media people, it's all pretend. Like, no, Alabama stole our kicker. Uh, I, they yes, illegally, they, did. they illegally recruited our. Want to say it, they illegally recruited our kicker and stole him from us. And like, that's <laughs> that's a fact. But that's that's how. But we act like it's not. We live in this la la world. Like, hey, let's not oh, talk. Re- I don't know why Here everybody knows go. what's going on. So, yeah, Alabama stole our kicker. <laughs> Um, a couple, other, a, su- right a couple other schools try to steal it, but then they go, okay, what's the Let's question? Talk- <laughs> oh, <dang. laughs> I love that. He took, it so, he took it so literal, though, where he goes, uh, we didn't lose, though. We know exactly where he's we at. We know exactly where he is. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I feel bad, though. This is like the life of a head football coach at the group of five level where a guy comes in, performs well, and he's looking at, let's just call it what it is. He's looking at getting promoted. He's looking at going to a power four now school more than likely is someone in the SEC or Big Ten. I mean, that's that's how we're all seeing college football as this thing plays out. And it's it's tough not to acknowledge that the system needs to be fixed. There needs to be some more, you know, more guardrails, guidelines put in to help sort this whole thing out. And. It's tough because what you're seeing right now in the college landscape is Olympic sports are being greatly impacted by this whole, um, you know, revenue share with student athletes. Now, there there are Olympic sports that aren't being cut, but they are being so underfunded by the athletics department at some of these schools that, in essence, they're going to turn into club sports, and so. Not to get into like a whole big tangent of a conversation that I don't know that we were prepared to talk about today, but if you look at, just to go back to the Olympic conversation, one of the reasons why the U.S. has performed so well is our system through the NCAA in Olympic sports in particular that creates this kind of training and breeding ground for Olympic athletes. You know, they are able to go um, get their education at the same time, train. And, you know, nowadays we don't have to worry about receiving funding if they are one of the best Olympic athletes and they they can profit off all that. But the point is that our institutions have provided the foundation for a lot of the training that goes on for our Olympic athletes. And it's helped to be able to propel them to be able to go on and eventually make the Olympics and, and win golds and win medals and be up there representing the United States. And that is one of the cause and effects that I don't know how it's going to play out, but I know this. Um, I, I know a, a certain school that you know some of the ways they're doing it are, you know, for example, let's say the head coach of this random sport, whatever you want to call it, was <clears throat> making five hundred thousand. Now, now that head coaching position makes seventy five thousand dollars a year, and so not only do you save obviously on the coaching salary. But you're essentially sending the message that we are not going to be funding this sport the way we used to because we can't. We're going to have to divert those funds to football, to probably men's and women's basketball, and anything else that we feel like is profitable, generates revenue, or can win us championships. That, that's, that's where a lot of these schools are at. And so it's unfortunate, but um, that's one big, big picture issue. And then the other issue is even within football, you know, how do we go about allowing a team like, you know, Miami of Ohio and an expanded playoff to remain competitive when it's hard for them to even hang on any of these talented players because they don't have the funds to support even, even those revenue generating sports like football, for example. <laughs> They're going to represent JUCOs and now JUCOs have to represent high school which totally it's like letting you know letting dares continue to to reproduce there's the you're losing the natural 
progression and process of of coming and going. Right. If you really think about it, I mean, from my perspective, the, I, I could see all of the, the other sports. But to me, the first thing I think about when you hear things like this is, is that you're talking about those 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 lower schools, those mid majors. Uh, they're going to get pillaged for for their players. And and so that used to be, OK, you didn't make it at Clemson. You go backwards. You go to a Juco. You go to a JUCO, then you end up going to, you know, it could be a power five school. It could could be a lesser of a of a school. You know, you could go to a mid major school and and that was kind of the flow of it. But you always had high school kids that were being recruited at at a at a high number at a high rate. And now you're seeing a, a change in how high school kids are getting recruited because Basically, schools have to start with recruiting their own players, which is crazy to think that that's the world we live in now. You have to recruit your own players so that they stay in in the school that they're in currently and not get plucked away by another school. But then you have to look at the landscape of what are your needs and where can you go to fill those needs where you can get a player that can step in right now, today, and be able to start for your team? And that is not JUCO so much anymore, and it's not high schools anymore. You're recruiting other schools, not only not only you know mid major schools, uh, but you're 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 recruiting other Power Five schools as well. You'll see a guy leave from Alabama to go to another big school because now I, I don't know if we talked about this on this show or, or on up on game, but the, the the wild thing is is that you'll see a guy that that plays for like I said in Alabama, and then he ends up at Clemson or he ends up at you know Notre Dame or Notre Dame has a guy that ends up at you know Georgia or whatever it may be, right? And that's what you're talking about. The dominance of Alabama was was because of their depth, right? You have you have two, three guys deep that are on your your depth chart, and if somebody goes down, you have a guy that's just as good, if not better, that's waiting in the wings to play. And in this transfer portal and NIL playing a part in how you're able to get kids through and into the transfer portal has totally changed the way that that you can approach you know having a team a second a second string guy who knows they could possibly go somewhere where the need is there for that position is looking to leave immediately you have agents i can't believe i heard this the other day where who was i said we're shutting down conversations with agents because it's time for season. Oh, now. Mike, Mike, Mike Gundy. Mike, Mike Gundy. Gundy. Yeah. Before, like, before the QR we're code on the shutting, helmet. We're <laughs> shutting down conversations of negotiations until until the winter or whatever it may be for negotiations so agents and all that don't reach out. The fact that this is the day and age that we're in, I keep saying we got to have something that regulates and, and creates more of a structure because I just see this thing. It's growing so big and there's so much money at stake stake that there has to be a structure that's put in place in order for it to to not get you know get too far out of control where it's not controllable at at a certain point i mean I, otherwise it's just going to continue to be the wild wild west and whoever can throw money at kids and throw money at situations which in some ways is how it already has been for a long time but it, it wasn't so out in the open you know that, I, it's pretty dangerous